Sukadu Dash, and so today we'll be talking about the uh, data science course. And here we have Anubhav. Hi, I am Anubhav Chatterjee. I am currently in the second year of the CMI data science course. Uh, I'm Pratap Pratap Das. Uh, I'm also in the same uh, CMI second year data science. Course. Yeah. So they are currently studying in uh, the CMI data science program, and they will be sharing all their experiences and how they got there and everything you need to know to come to CMI for the data science. So yeah, let's start. So first of all, uh, like, how did you, I mean, get to know about this program? So I get to know about it from a friend of mine. So he was preparing for an ISI test and also for CMI. And then I looked it up on the CMI website as well. I came across CMI's uh, uh, data science course through their website also. Uh, I have been following CMI's website from bachelor days and uh, so when they launched it, it was on their website and from there I learned all about it. Okay, so how did you prepare for the exam and how was your written exam? Okay, so uh, regarding the exam, uh, the uh, preparation started around uh, almost uh, six, seven months in advance. So preparation was mostly based on solving past year question papers, going through the syllabus and strengthening them. Uh, mostly uh, the syllabus is of uh, graduate level, except some uh, harder problems from class 11, 12 standards. So that's how I prepared for the exam. And my written exam was pretty good. So in our year, it was out of 90 marks. From there, uh, I would say that I attempted uh, around 18 objectives and I could do all these objectives but one. So I would say I did pretty well in the written exam. So I started preparing at, in, in January, at the beginning of January, and the entrance exam was on May, right? 15th of May yes. for us. Yeah. So, yeah, so the exam was also like okay for me and uh, like. Uh, since I was working, uh, I started by solving the 10 plus 2 books. So I guess uh, if there are someone, if there is someone who is a working professional, going through the basics first is a good option for them. Uh, so yeah. Okay, and so is there any interview after your written exam after you get qualified for the written? Uh, no, there was no interview. Like till date, there so there was no interview. But this year they were supposed to take an interview, but I'm not sure. I mean. I mean, no, no, this year they have confirmed that there would not be any. They are not taking the interview. Not taking the interview. In fact, CMI has only conducted interview just once, that too in 2016 for the BSc course. And CMI has never conducted any more any interview other than that. Okay, and how many students get selected for this course? The so what's the maximum strength is 40, 40 students. Okay. So, I mean, uh, the list that comes out is of 40 students or like uh, the number is more and 40 students gets in? No, no we have around, the list comes out around of uh, 60 to 70 students. Okay. And uh, uh, the last year in 20, uh, the previous batch, the 2018-2020 batch, where there were around 27 students in the batch and our batch has 39. Okay. So, yes, uh, can you tell me about the admission procedure, like uh, after you get selected, so how do you get to know about it? And uh, so obviously you see your name on the list and after that, what happens? How, how do you finally get the admission? Yes. So uh, after you get the email from the, uh, that you are, you are uh, like your admission is successful, like you are selected for the program. So like they, they sent you the admission instructions, like when you have to come for the document verification and stuff. And uh, prior to that, I guess you also have to pay the fees for the first semester. Uh, so they have a registration charges for 20,000, 20, I think. And yes, so it was 20,000 in, in our year. And the rest of the fees needs to be paid when you're uh, finally getting the admission. Okay, and what's the fee structure and like for two years? Okay, so the fee structure as uh, advertised on their website is two lakhs per semester. There is a provision for a uh, waiver and the waiver is uh, uh, since our, uh, waiver, the waiver was given to us was based on our family income, the annual family income and it somewhere amounted to 75,000 per semester. So your effective semester fee becomes 125, 1,25,000 per semester. Okay. 
so do you have to like uh, pay the whole fees uh, per semester or like at the beginning no no you have to pay pay, pay the fee semester wise semester wise yeah. okay fine in advance uh, there's also something like a, like a full tuition fee waiver is also there i guess but i mean i haven't seen anyone got that so. okay and there, there's a provision for a full tuition fee waiver as well i see yeah. and uh, so like after that when you i mean go for the course so like uh, what's your like life at cmi is like so what what was your first impression there okay so uh, when i first came to cmi the the uh, the most out of the ordinary thing that struck me was uh, the uh, strength the strength of the students so cmi is a very small campus Uh, there are only a very few courses being taught here, and since the uh, structure, the the so campus, exactly not the number of courses. It's actually like the strength is pretty low. I mean, like the number of students per batch is pretty low. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's one of the like uh, advanced students uh, who clear a a lot of uh, difficult exams. They are coming in here, so, so selection is very much highly based on merit. So depending on that. Uh, whatever for few population that we have at cmi they are highly educationally advanced ac academically advanced and hence so it's a very close knit uh, educationally advanced community okay so it's it's fun to interact with them it you get a lot you get to know a lot of things there's a uh, all the professors are so friendly they are so helpful So it's all in all, it was a very warm and welcoming experience coming to see. I see. The professors are really helpful. I mean, like you can have like an informal chat with them. It's not always. I mean, not always about the subjects only. You can discuss like about anything with them. And uh, so, uh, what about the hostel life? Okay, so the hostel life. I, uh, me, and Pratap. Uh, unfortunately, none of us got the hostel. So the hostel is uh, based on. since uh, there are a lot of students in the data science course compared to other batches and the admission to cmi process has has increased many folds from since the past years the accommodation available in the cmi hostel is less due to the lack of hostel space the data science students get alloc allocated the, the last in the hostel given a year's admission strength the number of students to be allotted from the data science batch varies usually in the admission year of 2018 everyone got accommodated as far as i remember during our batch of 2019 around 25 out of 40 students got accommodated uh, girls always get the first priority when it comes to hostel accommodation so you may practically assume that if you are a female candidate you will almost certainly get the accommodation in the campus host and uh, the other uh, students from the uh, the other students are based on the Uh, your average annual income of the family okay and uh, then what about the course structure like what did you learn and what are the class timings do you have problem for uh, like classes early morning so things like that uh, not much problem about early morning classes the classes start at 9 10 i guess so i mean it's not early morning that much I mean, people can't attend the class uh and okay so about the course work i would say like this is a this is a completely industry oriented course so after the end of our first year we have a summer internship so like it's mandatory and everyone has to attend the summer internship so that everyone gets some some industry exposure and then we also have an option for taking up a industry project in our third or fourth semester any one so this can be the continuation of the summer internship as well or uh, i mean it 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 must be associated with some company you can like Do uh, any other com company project. Okay, so where you two did your internships? Summer internship. I did my internship at IBM Research. Uh, I did my internship with uh, Temenos. It's a banking software company. Okay, and uh, are those paid internships or? Yes, so my internship was paid at Temenos. Okay, and. uh what i mean uh what kind of uh, stipend do they pay for the internships so we had a quite a huge high variance salaries uh, 
like uh, stipends available for the internship. I think the lowest that we had was somewhere around twenty five thousand, and the maximum that was offered was ninety thousand. Okay, and what did you learn in your coursework during your coursework? Something like, uh, I mean, at CMI, what did you learn? Uh, okay, so the first semester starts with the basic things like uh, linear algebra and uh, analysis and probability statistics programming. So, like, there's something for everyone. So, in uh, what happens in the data science program is the students come from various backgrounds, like so suppose mathematics, statistics, engineering. So, for the engineering student, uh, the programming part is uh, okay. I mean, he already knows that, but the probability and statistics part he has, he has to learn. Similarly, for the statistics guy, also the programming part he has to learn. So, there's always something. For uh, everyone to learn in the first semester, and then once the first semester gets completed, from the second semester we have the core data science subjects like machine learning, data mining, and like, big data with Hadoop and stuff. Yeah. Okay, and what are the some of the projects that uh, that you did in machine learning and all those things? Okay, so uh, I'll talk about my projects. So uh, one of my first project was with, in fact, I did that project with Pratap only. Uh, so it was on eigen voices. Uh, so we we had a linear algebra project, and we had to. Uh, it was a very interesting project in the sense that we had to identify which speaker is talking based on just three seconds of speaker data. So okay. that was a very interesting project. I worked on a uh, information retrieval system optimization project also, where I was helping the. It was my uh, Temenos project that I'm talking about. So. I was helping them be, uh, optimize the search engine for their document search. So your course will be over in one in a year, right? Yeah. So what are you planning to do after this, or what are the future prospects of this course? Uh, so since it is an industry-oriented course, I my plan is to take up a job in uh, in the industry. Okay. So that's how the course has been designed, and it it is uh, the optim the um, the the optimum way out of this course would be to get into an industry job yeah. so that is how the course has been designed and that is what would help you the most and once you have so my personal plan is to take up an industry job after this and for a few years develop myself in a particular desired field and then maybe move on to some further research in in my desired field so but uh, th taking up an industry job is highly recommended and it is the best way out again and what about the placements? The placements are pretty good. I mean, the in the previous year, all the students got placed. The hundred percent placement was there. Uh, the packages were, I guess, around like uh, fourteen, fifteen lakhs per annum uh, on an average. Okay. And what are the companies that came for placement? We had we had a, a few a number of good companies. So we had Accenture. Uh, we had HP. Uh, among the among the few named ones but among the not so diverse ones i would say there were some very high paying data analytics companies that came in like opex analytics the hertz software uh, tiger analytics so other than these we had uh, uh, then temenos temenos had a high uh, temenos recruited uh, more than like five students from our campus directly so at a very good package. Uh, so the placements I would say are really Here, good. I guess like uh, from our batch, uh, like Credit Source also hired interns. Yeah, so Credit Source also hired interns from our batch. Yes. And yes. For the placements, I guess previous year there was uh, PayPal and uh, like Morgan Stanley was also there from the Lim company. Okay, so your seniors are, I mean, uh, I mean, in those companies now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so yes, uh, do you have any advice for the coming batch or those who are preparing for the exam? Yes, yeah, sure. So I would put, like to put in my two cents here that uh, preparing for CMI entrance exam since it is just the written exam, the only thing that you need to do is clear the written exam. And given and for, the, for the written exam, I have something like, uh, so like the paper might be lengthy, for our case, it was a bit lengthy, so like the handling the time efficiently is important. Highly to attempt and which question to not. I mean, also like uh, I guess people who are attempting, they know that like uh, there are two parts, like objective and subjective part, and 
you have to clear the objective part for your subjective part to get checked otherwise it won't get checked. Okay, okay and uh, in the question paper how much weightage is given to the coding part and the mathematics part the coding part i guess uh, there are there are uh, actually three questions so i would say at most like 10 marks out of the whole yeah. 100 marks okay and uh, does someone have to know hardcore in uh, encoding to no no no, no absolutely just, just basic algorithms will do. I mean, not even a language idea just the idea how a code works and yeah. how a computer runs or needs a particular code is good enough okay. so thank you yeah it was nice okay bye, bye.